You should do an editing tutorial. Hey, do you think you can make a video on how to edit? Can you do a tutorial how to edit, please? I don't know how to edit, please. Dude, I'm a fan, but... Can you make an editing tutorial? I want to know how to edit your videos. I want what to edit your videos. Please tell me. You're the best. You the best. Okay, this is getting a little bit weird now. Oh, I gotta go outside. I gotta get some fresh air. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Whoa, whoa are you guys? Back away! Back away! No, no, please! Ah! Roblox editing tutorial. That's right, guys. It's finally here. Now, before we start, I just want to clarify that I'm going to be showing you how I edit my videos. Now, are they the best edits? Probably not. There's probably better, easier methods out there. But I'm just going to show you how I do mine. So the way I edit my videos is on PC. And for this video, I'll be using DaVinci Resolve. Now, usually I use Premiere Pro, but uh, that costs quite a lot of money. What? And so we're going to stick to DaVinci, which has a free version for you guys. So starting off with empty space. Now all this means is we're cutting out sort of the silent, empty parts of our audio. So in this example, I'm in the editing tab and I have some audio of me talking that I recorded. So using that cutting tool that I previously showed, all we are doing is just cutting out the parts that don't really have these audio wave bumps. And that just makes the flow of the audio sound faster and better. And especially if we compare these two together, we can see that the one that we edited is only a few seconds shorter. But especially in today's generation, our attention span is like 8 seconds. So every second counts. Next up is pop-up text. So to do this, we need to first have our text. So in order to get our text, I'm in the editing tab. And we're just going to go up to where it says effects. Click on that. And then here it's going to open up a toolbox. And in this toolbox, we're just going to click this little arrow, opening it up. And here it says titles. We're going to select titles. And here we're just going to pick the one that says custom text. And we're going to drag it into the timeline. So here we have our text on our timeline. Now we're just going to select our text. And we're going to make sure that our little scroll playhead here is going to be at the start of the video. We're then going to go up to the very top and click on this button called Inspector. And then here is where it's going to open up our text settings. Now there are two main sections. We have Title and we have Settings. So with Title, this is where you can sort of change the size of your text. You can change, you know, the tracking. Just playing around with how it looks. But when it comes to animation, we have to go into Settings. So for the pop-up animation, we're going to be using this zoom here. So if we just change this just to play around with it, we can see that it's zooming in and out. So we're just going to start off by changing the zoom to zero. So if we just double click in here, we press zero, it's going to make our text disappear on screen. And here we're just going to click this little diamond icon here, and that's going to turn orange. And what that means is we've created a frame. So it's going to start off off the screen. Now at the moment we can't see our little timeline where we put that frame and that's because we have to go over to our text and click on this little frame icon button and by doing that it opens up a timeline and here we can see our little frame that we've added in at the beginning. Now of course we want our text to now pop up on the screen so what we're going to do is we're going to just scroll a couple frames in front and then here we're just going to go back to our inspector settings and we're just going to scale this up a little bit. I might just make this a 1. That looks pretty good. And then from there, it automatically creates a frame because of course we've got an orange. And now if we go back to the beginning, and then we just play the video. It's now going to pop up on the screen. Now, of course, that is a little bit slow. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to this frame. We're going to click on it. and We're just going to drag it over a little bit more to the left. So now when we play it, it's a bit faster, right? Now, of course, it doesn't have that bounce effect, which is what I like to have. So what I'm going to do as well is I'm just going to zoom in a little bit on the timeline and we're just going to go in between these frames and from here we're just going to add another keyframe. So this time we're going to go to zoom and we're just going to increase it so it's really big and we're going to change it to about maybe 1.45. That looks pretty decent. You can change it to whatever you want. Now you can see that we have three keyframes. So if we go back to the beginning, we have one frame where it starts off screen. We then have one where it gets big and then we have one where it goes back down to small. So if we actually play that, you get this little bounce effect. And that is how you make a pop-up animation. Now, I also like to do this pop-up effect on my images as well. So this can use the exact same process. Another cool thing about using keyframes is that you can actually use this to create zoom ins and zoom outs. For example, if you want to zoom in, we just go to the beginning of our frame. Then we go back to Inspector and we set a frame for our zoom. And then if we scroll a little bit forward, 
and then sort of zoom in a little bit and then set another frame it's going to create that zoom in so in other words this is the exact same thing as the pop-up animation just slightly tweaked all right next up is something that i like to call the dumb moment now what do i mean by this well when it comes to my videos i have a lot of dumb moments where i mess up and usually i would exaggerate this by making the screen smaller kind of like this and so if you want to know how to do this it's actually really simple so we're in the editing tab and here we have our clip on our timeline so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to grab my cutting tool here and i'm just going to cut out the part where i want the moment to happen so in order to make the screen small you just got to click on our clip and we then go to inspector again and then once again we are just moving this zoom tool here and we're just going to make it smaller by making it smaller it makes the screen size smaller so here we can actually do this and that is how we do it so now when we play the video that's how we do it all right next up is black and white so this is pretty straightforward it's just making the screen black and white so to do this in this example i have my footage and we're just going to cut out the little part that we want to turn black and white so for example maybe this part now in order to make it black and white we have to switch it from this editing tab that we're in to the color tab so we're moving into this tab and here we can also see our footage that we edited on this little mini timeline and so we're just going to select the part that we cut out and all we are doing is just selecting it and then going to saturation and then just turning this down to zero and that makes it black or white very simple all right now next up is something that i like to call an angry moment now what i mean by this is sort of i'm changing the screen to make it super red and that sort of exaggerates that it's a really angry moment kind of like this so to do this it uses the exact same process like black and white So we have our clip we cut out the part that we want to change and then we switch over to the color tab and then selecting the clip all we need to do is just change these four color wheels to red or whatever color you want and by doing this it makes the screen go super red now of course you could play around further and change other stuff like maybe contrasts and shadows but it's up to you to play around with now let's say for example you mess up and you're not really happy with uh, the color that you chose you can just click this little reset button and that resets it back to normal so now you can restart all right next up is audio volume so if you want to know how to change the volume to be louder or quieter it's pretty easy to do so in this example i have my clip we are just selecting it and we're going to go to inspect and then here you can change the volume by making it maybe louder or quieter now an even faster way of doing this is by hovering over your clip and then here you can sort of drag up and down and that can sort of change the volume to be quieter or even louder all right next up is cropping so let's say for example you don't like this side part of the video it has this little ad on the side we don't want that we want to get rid of it now to do this it is like really simple all you got to do is just select the clip and then using this little rectangular icon underneath the video if we just click that and then select crop all of a sudden we can now move these sides and it crops out part of the video another way to do this is also to go into inspector and just open up the cropping section where you can specifically choose what side the crop with the exact number all right so next up is freeze frames now when i say freeze frame it kind of just means that you're freezing a specific frame in the video it's kind of like pausing a video making it like a still image so to do this it's really simple so in this example i have my clip and all we need to do is just cut out the part that you want to freeze the screen so let's say for example i want this specific keyframe right so once we've cut that part out we then make sure that the playhead is on that frame we want and then selecting the clip we then go to inspector settings and then scroll down to speed change and here we just click the little snowflake and that will freeze the frame that we've got our playhead over and now let's say for example we move out these clips to give it some more space we can now drag out this frame that we froze and it can now play for longer so now if we hit play we can now see that it transitions to a really poor still image and that's how you freeze a frame all right so next up i'm just going to talk about sound design now when I'm talking about sound, I'm talking about the sound effects and then we got the music. So when it comes to finding sound effects for my videos, I like to use websites like Freesounds, which contains a lot of free sound effects that you can search up yourself. So here I am on the website. So let's say for example, I want to find the snoring sound. Here we can just search up snoring and then once we press enter, then are going to pop up a wide variety of different options which you can listen to. Now let's say you found one that you liked, all you need to do is just click on it and then here you do need to log in to download but it's just like creating a Roblox account, it's like completely free. 
just requires an email. So the second place that I also like to get my sound effects is also from YouTube. So let's search up snoring sound effect and then here we can sort of listen to different snoring sounds that are on YouTube and once I've found one I can then download it. But one thing when it comes to YouTube sound effects, just check the description because sometimes it can actually say it's not copyrighted. In this case it says that we can use it. Now when it comes to finding music for your videos, I like to use audio library. So if we just go into our YouTube studio and see where it says like dashboard content analytics. Well, if we scroll all the way down, it's going to say audio library here as well. And then here is where you can like search stuff up. So let's say for example, you want a different genre. You want maybe some ambient music. We'll apply that. Let's say for example, we want a different mood. We want angry. And that's how you can sort of find a specific type of music. Here you can listen to it. Now again, one thing that I will mention is if you hover over in the licensing type, it will say if you can use it or not. So in this case, no attribution is required, so we don't have to put any credits in the video. But let's say for example, this one here, we hover over this one, it says that you can use this in your videos. However, you must also include some information. So in this case, you have to use credits for this. So let's just view the details. And then here it's just going to say, um, yeah, just put this in your video. Another method that you can also do is you don't necessarily have to use just audio library. So let's say, for example, we search up non-copyrighted music. Here we can just look at our other channels that might have cool music. For example, this one maybe. In this case, if you want to use this one, you just put this in the description. And it says that best vlog, no copyright music that is non-copyrighted. So all of this music here is non-copyrighted. All right, lastly, we got some bonus tips. So let's say you're in DaVinci and then you accidentally opened a whole bunch of stuff and you don't really know what to do. You're like, oh no, I accidentally changed something. How do I fix this? Well, if you go up to the top here, it says workspace. And then here you just click on reset UI layout. And that'll reset everything back to normal. All right, tip number two. Now let's say, for example, you have your recording here, but you want to delete this top layer, right? You don't want this. You just want the audio track. And so you try to delete it, right? You click on this, press delete. And what does it do? It deletes both of them. So how do you just separate them? Well, if you click on this, you then right click. It's going to say link clips. We're going to click that again. And what that does is now it's now separate, right? There's no longer a tick. So now we can select these individually. We can move them individually. And here we can delete just a specific layer. All right, tip number three. Now let's say, for example, you have an audio here, right? So let's say, for example, you copy it and then you paste it. And what happens is it then pastes inside the video that you just edited. And then that can be really annoying because it cuts it off, right? Now look, now all of a sudden you have your previous edited audio is now cut off. So one way to fix this is you can actually click on this. And then if you hold Alt on the keyboard, you hold Alt and then you click and drag, creating a new one. You can now drag underneath and click on this one, hold Alt again, click again and drag. You're creating it again. You're like duplicating it. That's a more faster way to do it rather than just clicking copy and then paste and then it just messes up. Tip number four. Now this one isn't really a tip when it comes to editing. Sometimes the best way to edit is to actually learn off other editors, right? And sometimes the best inspiration is from other tutorials. All right, we have the last tip and this is the most important. You need to like and subscribe. If you don't do this, hey man, I'll flush this little teddy down the toilet. Hey, I'll do it. Don't make me do it! Ah!